have the pleasure of introducing Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam is a man of vision who is always full of ideas aimed at the development of the country and is also often referred to as the Missile Man of India. This eminent scientist and engineer has served as the 11th President of India from the period 2002 to 2007. Totally dedicated to the nation, Dr. Abdul Kalam, his vision is to transform India into a developed nation by the year 2020 through hard work and perseverance. He holds a first world dream for a third world nation. People loved and respected Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam so much during his, president, during his tenure as a president that he was popularly called the People's President. We request him to give the inaugural address for Latitude 2011. Uh, friends, good morning to all of you. <coughs> I would like to greet uh, Uncle <coughs> Professor Bala Balachandran <laughs> <laughs> and Professor uh, Sriram Hanish Chapra and my friend Dr. Raghavendra Rao and distinguished guests, members of the faculty and dear students and young students who are sitting on the downstairs for all of them my greetings. Uh, friends, I am indeed delighted to address and interact. You guys finished? <laughs> I want to talk to them. Huh? Uh, you can you can sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Uh, friends, I am indeed delighted to address and interact with the participants at the inauguration of the Latitude 13.05. Is a Latitude of Madras, I think. Yes. Eh? Okay. Being organized by the Great Lake, I told Balaji, he must make a lake. So. <laughs> So he promised me he will make an artificial lake, you can swim all of you, okay? <laughs> he promised he will do that. And then it will be very, the ambience will be beautiful. Yeah, yeah, green building and a green lake and green people, it's very nice. So I would like to greet the experts and professionals in management and academicians, industrialists, corporate and all the guests present here. I was reading about the Great Lakes uh, Institute of Management which has the motto uh, Global Mindset and Indian Roots. This amalgamation is indeed the need of the modern Indian management education in this new decade and beyond. I have selected the topic uh, for young friends, 21st century management education, is okay? Okay, 21st century management for next 15 minutes, I am going to talk to all of you. Dear friends, when I look at the young business and management professionals at the Great Lake Institute Management at Chennai, uh, I was thinking what thoughts I can share with you. You know, what is the fundamental aspect of business uh, management? Anyone who converts the challenge into an opportunity through innovation creates wealth. He or she is indeed a leader. Are you? Are you a leader or manager? Are you a leader or manager? Leader? Manager, anybody can make a manager. But leader is very tough. Okay? So, I am asking management institution to give education how to make you the leaders in specialized field rather than managers. Now, when I say he or she is indeed a leader, are you, I asked, you did not respond. Can you be you or you want to be like everybody else? Now, do you follow what I am saying? Can you be you or you want to be everybody else? How many of you want to be you? 
Okay, now hear what I am going to say very carefully. Okay. I learnt every youth wants to be unique. That is you. But the world all around you is doing it best day and night to make you just everybody else. I will read again for you. Go back. I learnt every youth wants to be unique, that is you, but the world all around, all around you is doing its best day and night to make you just everybody else, including education. Including education teaches you how to be everybody else. Now, being like everybody else is convenient at a first glance, but not satisfying the long vision. The challenge, therefore, my young friends, this for addressing for young friends. The challenge, therefore, my young friends, is that you have to fight the hardest battle which any human being can ever imagine to fight and never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place that is unique you. What is that battle? Battle with knowledge and hard work. These are the twins requirement. So I am sure all of you will become unique you. How many of you? How many of you want to be unique you? It's a good number. Dear friends, normally where there is a wealth, there is a possibility of more business. Majority of the business products and services in the world is primarily focused on the consumers who have the purchasing power. That is the beaten track. Any entrepreneur or a business need to have a courage to travel into an unexplored path that will lead to success. What is that unexplored path which will give you a path to success? That means the success will come to for those who converts, who converts the inconvenience of the people into a gateway of business. That is, you convert inconvenience of people into the gateway of business. As per the management uh, expert, you would have heard about it, Professor C.K. Prahlad, he, he says the real source of the market promise is not the wealthy few. Have you heard about this? The real source of the market promise is not the wealthy few in the developing world or even the emerging middle income consumers. It is the billions of aspiring poor who are joining the market economy the first time. Actually, this is the type of, uh, when you go out of this campus, actually you have to deal with not rich people, how to empower the poor people, how that become a big business? I am going to give you narrate the incidents. I recommend all of you to read the book of Professor C.K. Prahla. It will be in your libra library. The Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid, published by Wharton School. The Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid. You must read all of you. When the majority of the business houses focused on the haves, very innovative entrepreneurs are business focused on the have-nots. We have witnessed the success of their innovation as a successful business proposition for the people who are living below poverty line. Some of the innovators who walked on the unexplored path have witnessed tremendous amount of success in their approach. All, all the pre-assumption of the target business market such as purchasing power parity, distribution difficulty due to non-availability of the road, transport and power, critical mass, brand consciousness, adaptability and connectivity has been broken by these innovators and created a new market called empowered customers from the people who are living below the poverty line. Because we have in India itself 300 million people. You are target population that 300 million people. Not that 700 million people, middle class and rich. That means when the innovation has built the capacity 
to consume with respect to affordability, access and availability and a knowledge dissemination through technological tools and innovation in process, product and services the new market has been created. When the agriculture growth is less than 3% and the farming and agriculture were considered as a worthless practice and when many farmers were got into difficulties. ITC has innovated Chi C. Chapal and brought productivity increase, a better price for their crops, better yield through better practices and a sense of dignity and confidence in being connected with the rest of the world, ultimately improved lifestyle and brighter future. Similarly, the experience of Gujarat farmers. For the 45 million people worldwide, and 9 million people in India, the precious gift of sight has been snatched away, most often needlessly, Aravind Eye Care system has innovated 70-30 model and contributed for eradicating avoidable blindness in Tamil Nadu and still a profitable enterprise in eye care. 70-30 for 100 patients, nowhere in the world has happened. 70 patient free treatment, only 30 have to pay well to do. When 5.5 million amputees in India, 10 million to 20 million amputees in the world and the additional 250,000 people lose their limbs annually to diseases, accidents or other resorts, Bhagavan Mahavir, Mahavir Samiti has innovated prosthetic Jaipur food and revolutionized life for tens of thousands of amputees around the world. Today, ISRO's technology Polyurethane has further expected to reduce the cost and it becomes more lighter by 60 percent. It has become an enterprise. A social task, social mission has become an enterprise. Nowhere it has happened in the world. When India contributes to 30 percent of all di diarrhea deaths in the world and 19.2 percent of the children in India suffer from diarrhea due to non-accessibility to safe water and sanitation and awareness on better hygiene practices, Hindustan Liver Limited innovated and created a unique public-private partnership model as a solution made this public health issue as an integral part of the business and created a success in improving the quality of life. When the banks consider the people of living below poverty line are not a viable market because of their negligible purchasing power, and treated them as a non-viable and not financially bankable. ICA, 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 ICA Bank innovated microfinance to self-help groups and proved the world how formal banking can convert the poor into customers, at the same time empowering the poor. All this innovation innovated and pioneered by the industry, corporate, NGOs for the poor has symbolized the business success at the same time elevated the quality of life of the people who are living below poverty line. For all this, what is one thing that is needed is work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Will you repeat with me? I will. I will. Work with integrity, work with integrity. And, and succeed with integrity. Succeed with integrity. Very tough, isn't it? <laughs> Will you do all of you an exercise? Tomorrow, by email, you can send me apj at the rate of abdulkalam.com email. Okay? You have to give me five names. What political leader? who living with political leader, not gone political leader, <laughs> who worked with integrity, succeeded with integrity. Okay? Do you follow? <laughs> Number one, one you have to write. Only one you should write. Don't uh, uh, clutter that one. Only one living person, you, you believe young fellows, only for young fellows, all the students, you should respond to me. Second one, bureaucrats. Bureaucrats in India who worked with integrity and succeeded with integrity. Select one follow. Okay? Second follow. Third follow, CEO. CEO of 
bank or any industry CEO who worked with integrity and succeed with integrity. Fourth fellow will be a social worker. He made a social societal change. And fifth, finally, a person whom you believe in all the integrity way, he made a big difference to the country by working with the integrity and succeed with the integrity. How many of you respond to me? How many of you respond with me? Oh, 24 hours I have joined you, okay? So, wish you all the best. Tough time, tough time you will have. <laughs> okay. Now, can you, re now work with integrity, succeed with integrity, you repeated with me. How to work with integrity? What is the one thing needed to work with integrity? And succeeded with integrity because not taught in the management schools. That's why I'm going deep into it. The work with integrity and succeed with integrity, how to do that? Now that's called you need righteousness in the heart. The righteous in the heart. Will you repeat with me if you don't mind? Sorry, yeah, your breakfast I hope you have taken. Okay, now you are going to repeat. Where? Where? There is righteousness in the heart. There is beauty in the character. When there is beauty in the character, there is harmony in the home. Harmony in the home. When there is harmony in the home, there is order in the nation. When there is order in the nation, there is peace in the world. Friends, did you see? One unique situation. If you have one quality, beauty in the character possible, harmony in the home is possible, order in the name is possible, and peace in the world is possible. What is that one quality? What is that one quality? Righteous in the heart. Now the question is, who will give that righteous in the heart? Can you guess? Who can give the righteous in the heart? Young fellows, respond. Even sitting fellows can respond. <laughs> Floor fellows can respond. Righteous in the heart, who can give? Ourselves. Eh? Ourselves. Ourselves. Yes? Yes, yes. One of you get up and talk, man. We yeah. ourselves. We ourselves, okay. This one answer. Yes? Yes? Anybody else from the management school? Experts? God. Okay, one management expert says God, okay. Anybody? Yes, yes. Eh? Teacher. Teacher, 50 marks you got, not 100, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes? Okay, friends, I will give that answer. Three people can give you the righteous, the heart up to age 17. After that, difficult, okay? Up to age 17. The three people are all father, mother in a spiritual environment. Father, mother? In a spiritual environment. Third one, third one, it's a primary school teacher. Primary school teacher. These are the three people can give the righteous in the heart. And I'm sure all of you would have got it or you try, okay? Uh, see the link between the divine message of the righteous and the intervention of the industry to bring peace to the... So, what is treated as a neglected segment is a big market uh, for the multinational companies today. What is considered as a charity by the industry through corporate social responsibility has been redefined into a social entrepreneurship to empower the people. See that how it changed, created the customer for their business, leads to win-win business model for both. So, dear friends, you all should have the courage to walk into an unexplored path. That will lead to success in your enterprising spirit and bring prosperity, peace and society. Friends, let me talk about what type of world in the present, in the present century you will witness. What type of world? And uh, the world in the 21st century, that is the present century, will be a knowledge-based society with multiple opportunities 
I was reading a book, but I have modified some thoughts to, to, to explain to you. I was studying the book called Empires of the Mind by Dennis Whiteley. You should read that book. It's a paperback available and very simple book. Uh, this book gives what type of new world which we are facing now, what was yesterday, what is today. I have modified certain points of the author to suit our condition, Indian condition. I have also added a third line which is pertinent to the action required by the management institution, like uh, a great like institute. The, it specially says the message is what worked yesterday won't work today. What worked yesterday? won't work today. That is the message the book gives. Now, for example, I am going to give you 10 points. First point, you can work with me. First point, yesterday natural resources define the power. Yesterday, natural resources define the power. Today? Today? Very good. Today, knowledge is the power. Now, what is the message? Institution like yours, will be the powerhouse for the knowledge. Now, second point, yesterday hierarchy was the model. Yesterday, hierarchy was the model. Today, today, today synergy is the mandate. Today, uh, institution would be an enabler of intersection of the multiple faculties. That is among faculties, a business fellow, a market fellow, a strategy fellow, a project fellow, all very interactive. That means institution would be enabler of the intersection of the multiple faculties toward mission goals. Third point, yesterday leaders commanded and controlled. Yesterday they were commanders, leaders. Today, today leaders empower and coach. Today leaders, not commanders, they are not commanders. They are empower and coach. That means potential leaders will be empowered through exposure to the needs of the sustainable development. What we need today, what you learn in the college, in the institution like management institution, how to do the sustained development. Yesterday, shareholders came first. Today, this is your area, customer come first. That means education should inculcate sensitivity to customer needs. Yesterday, employees took order. Today, today, teams make decision. That means institution can inject team spirit when you are learning. The teams with multiple teams have to do the programs. Yesterday, production determined the availability. Today, competitiveness is the key. That means competitiveness powered by research. And the university has university or any institution have to have the motto of teaching, research, teaching. That means the best research will give best teaching. Uh, best teaching will give the best research. Yesterday value was extra. Today value is everything. Value based education has to be introduced as a part of the curriculum at least for one hour every week. Everywhere. Yesterday everyone was a competitor. Today everyone is a customer. During education, industrial and entrepreneurship training is essential. Yesterday, profits were earned through expediency. Expediency. Today, work with integrity and succeed with integrity. That means home, organization and educational places should become the learning places. Friends, I am sure the member of present here, particularly young people, will keep this aspect of 21st century in mind which facilitate the students and faculties to evolve the learning process of meeting the demands of the 10 components or you can add some more of knowledge society. For that, what is needed is the creative leadership. Now, how do you get the creative leadership? Now, friends, I will be connecting the competitiveness for national prosperity and the evolution of a creative leadership. I am starting with the competitiveness, end with the uh, creative leadership. Since I am the miss of the experts and professionals in management, <coughs> let me discuss the linkage between the national economic development and creative leadership. A nation's economic development is powered by competitiveness. 
the competitiveness powered by knowledge power. The knowledge power is powered by technology and innovation. Technology and innovation is powered by resource investment. Resource investment is powered by return on investment. Return on investment is powered by revenue. <coughs> revenue is powered by volume and repeat sales as you know. Volume and repeat sales is powered by customer loyalty. Customer loyalty is powered by quality and value of products. Quality of value of products powered by employee productivity and innovation. Now employee productivity is powered by employee loyalty. Employee loyalty is powered by employee satisfaction. Employee satisfaction is powered by a working environment like a green environment. Working environment is powered by management innovation. The management innovation is powered by creative leader. Where they started? Where they started? Competitiveness. I ended finally. The national development is powered by competitiveness. Finally, I, I landed their creative leadership. <coughs> For success in all missions, it is essential to have a creative leaders in our country or anywhere. Creative leadership means exercising the vision to change the traditional role from the commander to the coach. You will not become the commander when you are a leader. From the commander to coach, manager to mentor, from director to delegator, and from one who demands respect to one who facilitates self-respect. For enhancing enterprise value, we need the large number of creative leaders. I suggest to the audience, all the students particularly, leaders of the institutions, the first few rows, and the student to have an exercise on evolution of a creative leadership. That means you have to study the law of development and national economic development and multiple steps that power economic development leading to creative leadership. Management for the billion. Now key Indian management institutions are ranked internationally very well and their alumni are doing extremely well as their leaders, ladders and change agents top multinational and national institutions. Their salary earnings and challenging leadership position are making many youth to move towards the management training. While we are proud of this, the question that we have to ask is, how do you make use of this favorable situation for the inclusive development of the country? Friends, in my opinion, the education of the management for 21st century has to be all focused towards 2020 development profile of the nation. When you are in India, you must talk about 2020 development profile of the nation as well as the world development profile 2030. 2030, I have provocated recently for the world. I have experimented this idea with my team in Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad at Indore as well as uh, Gatton Business School, Kentucky in USA. The results are encouraging. Many ideas emerge in creating, uh, uh, creating a free nation in improving education system at all levels, in ensuring quality energy and water, in realizing a transparent governance and many other areas of development. I feel each management institution may study missions keeping in view the sustainable development of the city and state where they are located. Why not our village panchayat leaders and our officials at various levels, state government, officials, post offices, railway station, police system and many other walks of life in governance routinely get trained in management through specially designed course packages in the affordable way. Now friends, I, I believe that uh, finally I would like to say in conclusion, what I will conclude is profit and integrity. We will have to find newer methods of cooperation so that the core competitions of even remote villages can be synchronized for competitive products. So everything global must have that tone, management for 6 billion, then the world, 6 billion people, water for 6 billion, energy for 6 billion, 
education for 6 billion, health care for 6 billion. Such empowerment will lead to the world which is prosperous, peaceful, grows on sustainable path of development. It is beyond doubt that the enterprises and business model will play an increasing role in the evolution of the humankind and nation in the future. They would be recognized by the contribution which they make lives of the people and the profit would be recognized only when they come with the integrity. Now profit with integrity, is it possible? A profit with integrity leads to sustained growth. How is it possible? We need to have a national ethics for sustained growth and peace. Where from it starts? Nation has to have ethics in all its tasks for sustained economic prosperity and peace. If nation is to have ethics, society has to promote ethics and value system. If society is to have ethics and value system, families should adhere to ethics and value system. If families have to, have, to be get evolved ethics and value system, parenthood should have the inbuilt ethics. Parental ethics come from great learning, value-based education and creation of a clean environment that leads to righteousness in the heart. Uh, from uh, for, friends, for 21st century, one of the way important business ethos will be the song, I will work with integrity and succeed with integrity. You have already done that. It is indeed a tough process, but only tough-minded people defeat the problem and succeed. With these words, I inaugurate the L, L uh, attitude 30, 13 degree, 13 degree 0.5 is being organized by the Great Lakes Institute of Management. My greeting and best wishes to all of you. My may God bless you all, friends. Now, now, friends, can I take some few uh, about three questions? I can take because I have to go somewhere. Is enough? Okay. Three or four questions. Yeah. Anybody, anybody, anybody can ask. Only students. Even the sitting guys can ask. The sitting guys. Okay. Start, start, good start. Good afternoon, sir. Ah. So my name is Tripti. Yeah. So I would like to know your take on uh, the growing uh, difference between the rich and the poor, the unequal distribution of wealth in India. How to do it? How to do it? So, eh? so eh? your take on it. Eh? Your, your your viewpoints on it. Well, my viewpoint, I have, uh, I have suggested what is called Pura. Pura means providing urban amenities rural area. Uh, the in that idea is to Pura means providing physical connectivity, electronic connectivity and knowledge connectivity so that the economic connectivity of the people will come. That means the whole India convert into 7,000 Puras. Out of that, each Pura will have 20 to 50,000 people, uh, 30 to 40 villages. You give the physical connectivity and those villages, connect all of them. And one connectivity itself is going to make economic change. Then you give the electronic connectivity so that the farmers and the fishermen will benefit from the message of what is the cost structure of the business products. Third one, knowledge, uh, knowledge connectivity. That means you give the core competence uh, to the workers, core competence to the fishermen, core competence to the farmers. There is a knowledge connectivity. If you give all these three connectivity, then you get the economic connectivity. Okay. Uh, now, government of India decided very close to your college, uh, there is one pura is going to come. Okay. The government of India and the private sector jointly uh, putting up a pura yeah, complex is going to come. Uh, they are connecting, I understand, 50 villages. Yes. Yes, this book is available in the library with Mr. Pillai and Dr. Yeah, okay. there. Yes, yes. Second question. Good morning, sir. My name is Vasajit. My question to you goes like this. What are the two qualities that are inherent in you? And what are the two things that you learnt over the years that helped you reach to such great heights in life? Well, I don't know whether I reached great height. Still, still I had to go a long way. But one thing I want to tell you, I, I have done, I have worked with great human, uh, great hum human beings, leaders, great leaders like uh, Vikram Sarabhai, and Professor Thies Dhawan and Dr. Pramprakash, they are my gurus, they, I worked with them. And uh, I worked with three projects, one is uh, ISRO project, satellite launch vehicle project, the another one, Agni project of DRDO, third one, Pura. 
providing urban amenities rural all these things there are challenges good things are there and also problem will be there what i learned out of these three programs so far in my you know i am the 80th orbit around the sun <laughs> what is the meaning i am the 80th orbit around the sun i am in the earth earth is orbiting one orbit is one year so i am the 80th orbit at the moment okay <laughs> so 60 years i nearly 60 years of the 80th <laughs> year i have worked in this program what i learned is number one your wish your leader should have a vision leader should have vision and vision not sufficient then you must have a passion to do that vision that what professor vikram sarabhai did passion passion to do the vision third one you should not be frightened with the problem okay you should become the captain of the problem defeat the problem and succeed okay what will you do problem should not become your captain you should become the captain of the problem defeat the problem and succeed this third thing i learned fourth thing is the most important thing work with integrity and succeed with integrity these four qualities you have you have arrived okay okay sir good morning sir so what what is the toughest situation you experience when you work with integrity and succeed with integrity huh eh? work with what is the toughest situation so eh? far you are experienced eh? when you work with integrity and succeed with integrity well i i personally believe you see i this question i was asked uh, when i was addressing the about 120 ias uh, trainees they were already posted to collector district they they were to appointed at various district they asked me this question mr kalam uh, tell me you are saying you asked us to take work with integrity succeed with integrity eh but when i go and work with a uh, fellow my boss is corrupt what shall i do that's the that's a question you have posed in a different way now answer to that what i told them so i have worked in three government establishment uh, two government establishment i worked nearly 45 45 years both of them put together when i worked i had dealt with a lot of money okay a lot of money but uh, i assured that young man is man this 45 years period nobody has approached me for wrong things i am the superior or anybody else now why he did not approach why he did not approach he or she why did not approach to you to do wrong thing because you have to build a brand each one of you here who are sitting here build a brand around you okay build a brand around you. that brand very tough very tough you have to go through lot of setbacks but you have to face it with courage people have the courage only will succeed okay that means each one of you if you want to succeed as a ceo or you succeed in industry or succeed in a governmental job you have to build a brand around you nobody can come to you if you have a brand with that you can work with integrity and succeed with integrity okay, okay. good question Hello. yes ah this fellow this fellow yes young fellows ask question yeah um the, you said that our educational system makes us like anybody else yeah well. fantastic uh, fellow you got it <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what what changes would be proposed to the system to make it uh, go in a, i mean may, to make us lead a better life or to yes or to make us the ta- take the path not what follow what class you are studying uh, i am studying in class 11 uh, what subject you have taken uh, science what's your dream uh, uh, at the present i want to become an iitian okay okay now uh, to is a good question you asked me see the in education there are three system one is primary education secondary education higher education okay now i am not much concerned with the secondary education the higher education but our primary education is very bad that means the children of creativity up to age 17 the education should bring out the creativity of the children 
That means the teacher has to be creative, the classroom has to be creative. It's a new environment. Professor Yashpal is working, uh, working, yes, a new type of education system for primary education. Okay? Okay, friends, thank you. Oh, time over. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have some books with a uh, book for your, uh, for your library. library, and I'm going to, I'm very happy to give it to Uncle Bala. As a mark of respect for the visit of Dr. Kalam, and based on his advice, Great Lakes Institute of Management and myself on a 50-50 basis will initiate five scholarships from this year in the name of Mahatma Gandhi and Kastur Bhai Gandhi for five people. Thank you very much, sir. And this will be based on merit and need base. Thank you very much for the pleasure and now we'll request. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. Audience, we request.